Good morning or afternoon, wherever you're at, evening. I don't know where you're at. Um, I love to hear, like when you watch these, um, I just wanna say, I hope you're having a great day. Today, we're gonna kind of dive into um, the Israelites and talking about the Red Seas in our lives because we've all had them. And so we're gonna dive in and see like, how did they handle that? P.S. not well. And then how can we trust God in those moments where, man, it looks like the world is coming after us and that it, it's not looking too pretty, not looking too pretty. So we're going to dive into that. If we haven't met, I'm Connie. I am a Christian. I love Jesus, love God, um, love to see love to encourage women. Like that's one of the gifts that he's given me. Um, and love to just see God daily, like just build my faith and build, um, it's just who he is, the truth of who he is. Um, like you, I, I struggle at times to find time for his word to really dig a little bit deeper. I have doubts at times. And so I'm on this journey right here with you. Okay. So anyway, I'm super excited about today, though. Um, I love the story of the Israelites. I love that God used an ordinary man like Moses, um, who totally felt unqualified, who totally was like, I, I don't know that I can do this, God. How many times have we spoken that? Like, I'm not sure, God, that I can do what you're calling me to do. But he did it. And so in this part of the story, they've already left Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt. Okay, so they left, they have went this way, and they come across their first um, obstacle. Okay, it was maybe a little bit bigger than an obstacle. It was the Red Sea. Okay, and it, it's a sea. It goes into the ocean. The army is chasing them. Okay, so imagine the fear that you're running, you know that this is what got spoken, but then you get to water, okay? Now, I'm not a big fan of water. I just, I don't love being in the water. So for me, that would have even been more terrifying and been like, um, God, what are we doing? And so I want to pick this up. This is Exodus 14 and um, verse 10. And we're going to read a little bit of this so you can kind of get the picture of them. When Pharaoh drew near, okay, so that was the, those are the bad guys. The people of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, then said to Moses, is it, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only have to be still and silent. So at the end of the story, God ends up parting the Red Sea. But aren't we like these Israelites? Like God gives us this thing and says, okay, in this season, this is what I want you to do. And we go, yes, okay. We forget that there's going to be some battles on the backside of that, right? We're like, okay, march forward, just do it all. Like, yes. Um, and then the minute we run into a battle, the minute we run into an obstacle, we're crying out to God. And then we're crying out to the people around us. Like, maybe I heard God wrong. Maybe I didn't, you know, hear all of this. Like, why, why is God doing this? If he told me to do it, like, why am I not seeing immediate results? Like, that's who we are, right? Like, if we're real, not much has changed in all of these years, right? Like that was so far long ago. We haven't 
changed really. And so I think there's some things here that I want to just dive into, okay? But I want you to be a little bit real with God today, okay? I want you to write down, this is question one, where are some areas where you feel like God has called you out, okay? He said, Connie, Sue, Rebecca, like, I want you to do X, Y, Z. And man, you gung ho, like you went totally after it. And if you're just honest, like you, you're facing some obstacles with it. Okay, maybe he called you to start a business. Maybe he um, asked you to start a ministry. And you're just like, this isn't going like as perfect as it was in my head. And I want you to write down just a few of those things, okay? And I want to dive into this part. Um, because one, they cried out to God, but man, then they went and like mumbling amongst each other, mumbling to their leader, you know, like, and just that doom and gloom, like, you know, well, we could have stayed there and we could have just died there. And did you bring us out here because there weren't any graves there? I mean, like that negative cycle that many times we get into. So I want you to just think for a minute, like when you look at those things that you feel like God has called you to do, maybe other things, do you ever get in that place where you just cycle and you kind of think like it's the negative, right? But here's the problem with the negative. Once we start it, it's so hard to stop it. So hard, so hard. And so I want you to write down like where are some areas where if you're just honest with yourself, okay, like you're getting a little frustrated that you're not seeing the progress, you're not seeing the answers and you've just gotten a little bit negative with it. You complain about it a lot, your friends and family, they're just kind of tired of hearing you complain a little bit about it. Okay, maybe they haven't said it to you, but they probably are. Okay, what are those places? Okay, and then let's, let's kind of go into this a little bit. Moses tells them, like Moses, he had to have gotten frustrated with them. I mean, quite honestly, if you haven't read the whole, like go through about Exodus 14, 15. But he says, fear not, stand firm, see the salvation of the Lord. Um, he says, the Lord will fight for you. You only have to be silent. Stop your complaining. <laughs> um, how many times do we just, are we not still? I want you to think about that. And I want you to write a prayer and just, just tell God, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That I've just not been still that I've not trusted that you know the plans for my life and they're to prosper me, not to harm me. They're for my good, for my future. Where is it where you need to stand still? Where is it that you need to declare, God, you're going to fight for me on this? I have a friend right now who um, is going through a really hard season in her marriage, like a really, really hard season and you can just see this battle like this spiritual battle that's going on um specifically with her husband and I just like I see that sometimes and one of the things we've talked about in this season is just like girl you've got to stand still and you've got to pray you've got to believe that this is just an obstacle that God is fighting for him. And I don't know what it is in your life. I mean, I could name a few things in my life. I could name a few things with friends. Um, where is it that you need to stand still? And I want you to just, and if you have to, palms up and say, God, here are the areas that I need you to fight for me. I need you to fight for this relationship. I need you to fight for my child that has an addiction. I need you to fight 
for my purpose and my calling. I want you to just take a minute and just ask him to fight for you. And I want you, like if you hear a specific word, sometimes you'll sense it, sometimes you'll feel it, sometimes you'll see it. Like there's so many different ways that God speaks to you. Um, I want you to write those down, okay? If you just sense, hear, feel something, um, you just kind of know the Holy Spirit speaking, I want you to write that down, okay? And I want you to know our first reaction as people is to complain and to say, God, why did you do X, Y, Z? You guys, the Holy, the enemy wants nothing more than for us to give up. When it gets hard that we say, well, maybe I didn't hear him. Maybe I didn't see it. Maybe, you know, maybe I just got it wrong and we give up. And I want you to stand still, to hear him. Okay. And if, if you're really smack in the middle of a battle, okay, I want you to write down specific questions for God. You know, and it's, and here, here's a good example of this, okay. Um, my friend that whose husband is just on his own little journey out there. We've been writing down the question, how do we pray over him? What scriptures do we declare over him? Okay. Maybe you have a child that's dealing with that addiction. Maybe you um, have a job that you're just like, you're not passionate about. You're not loving. God, how do I pray over this? God, what are the steps that I need to take? Okay, because we can't change anyone. I have a narcissistic mother who I can't change. You guys, when people have walked through trauma, they've walked through junk, they have to want to have healing. There's no words you can speak, no prayers that you can do that's going to make them want that. So be really specific with God. How do I pray over this person? Maybe what words do I speak over them? What does that look like? And let God just direct that. Maybe you need to send a text. Maybe there's a friend that you, um, you know, maybe things are just not well between the two of you. You know, maybe there were some harsh words spoken and, and just ask God, like, are there, is there something I need to text? Is there a phone call I need to make? What are the steps that I need to take? Okay. Because again, we can't heal somebody, but we can work on us. Okay. So I want you to just be really clear on that. And again, you're going to hear it, sense it, feel it, however he talks to you. Maybe later on today when Somebody sends you a message or a song comes on. Um, God is always speaking. So just know that, okay? Um, and I'm going to pray over us today, okay? To kind of end this. And um, you guys, if you're not in the email, the journal prompts are in there. The um, I send you the video every single morning so you don't have to like go dig it or hope that YouTube will send you a notification. It's all right there. Okay. So make sure you do that. I've got a, a freebie down in the bottom that you can pick up. It's awesome. Um, a description you can pray over yourself for the week. Um, I'm just going to pray over you right quick, if that's okay. God, we thank you that, um, God, that you show us that we're so much just like everybody else. You know, that we have the same struggles, that, that this is nothing new and it's not anything. The enemy will whisper, you know, oh, it's just you. It's not just us. So, God, we thank you that, um, one, that you fight for us. God, that when we face obstacles, that we can stand and just be still and just 
see you um, change us, to give us specific instructions, to give us specific words to speak. God, help us to stand still and to hear you and know you and to know what we need to do. God, I pray for every relationship. God, every obstacle that my sisters are, are facing. God, my prayer over them as they stand still. And God, if there are testimony after testimony of just seeing you fight for them, of seeing you part Red Sea so they can walk on dry land. God, I praise you for what you're going to do. In your precious name, amen. My gosh, girl, I'm praying. I'm praying for you. If you have a prayer request, make sure you put it in the comments, okay? Um, I do read those. If you um, are like, I don't know if I want to put it there. Look, you can put unspoken, okay? Nobody needs to know your business, okay? If you don't want anybody to know it, just put unspoken, okay? And um, we're happy to pray over that because I don't need to know. Honestly, that's just between you and God. So if you want to put unspoken, awesome. Okay, anyway, we'll see you in the next devotional. Okay, have an amazing day or an amazing night if you're headed to bed. Okay.